Uh, today, Tom and I, well, mainly Tom, are going to tell you all you need to know in five minutes or thereabouts, with no hesitation, repetition or deviation, about the new regulations on prepacks. They came into force on Friday the 30th of April, just as we were all taking off for our long bank holiday weekend. Now, their effect is to impose restrictions on business and asset sales by administrators to connected parties. Quick journey back through the mists of time to the Pre-Enterprise Act regime in 2002. Then an administrator who wanted to sell before he put his proposals to creditors would have to get the permission of the court. Then, of course, we had the Enterprise Act changes in 2002. Uh, which introduced the prepack with a lot of noise and a lot of controversy, bringing with it SIP 16. There weren't that many successful court challenges to prepacks, but there was still the odd case, like Remos Groundworks, uh, that showed that at the very least SIP 16 wasn't being fully complied with. Then, of course, we had the prepack pool in 2015. This was a voluntary uh, facility, but it was vastly underused. So, Tom, that takes us through the last uh, 15, 20 years or so. Where are we as of Friday? As of Friday. Uh, right. Deep breath. The snappily titled uh, Administration Restrictions on Disposals, etc. to Connected Persons Regulations 2021. Um, and these regulations impose a new requirement. You can satisfy it in one of two ways, but it's a new requirement on administrators who seek to dispose, hire out, or sell a company's property to one or more connected persons. And I'm going to call this a disposal. Um, and, and Marcia, to pick you up on one thing, um, the regulations aren't restricted to prepacks. So any disposal, inverted commas, in the first eight weeks of the administration is covered by these, uh, including disposals affected by a series of transactions. Uh, as long as all or a substantial part of the company's business or its assets is to be transferred. Um, and there's no exclusion from this for small companies. So there is this new requirement. Um, it's to obtain either advanced creditor approval for the disposal or a report from an evaluator on the disposal. And you can obtain the advanced creditor approval, or you must obtain it, by including the proposal in the Statement of Proposals, capital P, so your proposed dis disposal, um, and obtaining creditor approval to that. Or you get a report from an evaluator who's described in some detail in the regulations, uh, in a nutshell, an independent person with relevant knowledge and experience and insurance in place. Um, and the evaluator will give you an opinion on whether the consideration and the grounds for the disposal are reasonable in the circumstances. So there's the choice. You either go for advanced creditor approval uh, or the evaluator's report. And it's the connected buyer who's to get the report. In fact, on a reading of the regulations, there's no limit to the number of reports you can get. Um, but if you go down the route of second, third, fourth, you need to disclose the prior ones to the evaluator. That's not surprising. And indeed, even if the evaluators come back and say, no, we can't confirm this is reasonable in the circumstances, the administrator may proceed with the disposal regardless, uh, but he's got to set out his reasons to creditors for doing so. And the evaluator's report uh, goes to creditors and to company's house, uh, although obviously you can redact confidential information. So those are the two ways of satisfying the new requirement. Then looking then at the first, the first route, uh, getting credit ap approval. Yeah. How practical do you think that's going to be? I think not very practical in the short time scales that you're usually looking at for disposing, uh, and particularly prepack. If we if we focus on that particular example, um, because you, you've got to um, produce the statement of proposals, you've got to put the proposal to dispose in it. You've got to give the 14 days notice for approval. You've got to go through the Schedule B1, Para 53 provisions, and indeed the insolvency rules to decide what's getting the relevant consent of appropriate creditors, i.e. have you got the majority of creditors supporting it? Have you got 50% of unconnected creditors not voting against it? 
So all those criteria that you'd normally be putting together and dealing with under the statement proposals route, you've got to do under the time pressure of actually disposing of this. Um, and, and rather confusingly, um, we mentioned right at the beginning that these are looking at sales to connected persons. The definition of connected in para 60A of Schedule B1 is not the same as we're familiar with for deciding, among other things, who's a connected creditor for voting on a statement of proposal. So it's not the Section 249 and 435 familiar territory for transactions at an undervalue and transactional avoidance. It's not that. There's a different regime to tell us whether something's connected or a buyer is connected for the purposes of the regulations. Um, certainly, the definition is widely drawn. So if you're an administrator deciding whether this disposal is caught, and therefore looking at the buyer and saying, is this person connected? Well, it includes the obvious categories. So the directors, other officers, their associates, um, unless that association is under an employment relationship, but the family associations are all covered. Um, includes shadow directors. I mean, by definition, that's going to be a little more problematic to identify under time pressure. Um, and then you've got the voting area. So it includes those entitled to exercise or control the exercise of 33% or more of the company's voting power. So that's the traditional association route. What's a little odd is that former directors and shareholders don't appear to be connected. I'm not quite sure why that is. That is odd. Well, do you think the legislature have missed a trick here? It's such an obvious loophole. I mean, can't, can't directors just get out of the regulations by resigning at the last minute? Well, yes, although the restriction here is on the administrator selling to somebody. Yeah. So I think if someone resigned at the last minute, the administrator just simply wouldn't take part in this because here's an attempt to outflank the regulations. And maybe the focus of the legislature was on companies as purchasers. I mean, that's much more the usual scenario. And the definition of connected companies does include a situation where any of those individuals are or have been <laughs> directors, officers, associates, and so on. So they've caught in the company purchaser context the idea of someone resigning. It's just not in the individual purchaser context. Um, so that's the first requirement. Um, let me give you a moment on the second, which is the evaluators. Um, as I've said, you go to an evaluator. There's no specific list that's going to be kept of these. Um, it's got to be an individual, independent, with relevant knowledge and experience. Probably those who form the pre-pack pool will be a, a good starting point for who's going to perform this role. Um, what's interesting to me is that there's a lot of important questions still unanswered here. Um, to whom do the evaluators owe their duty of care is one point. Um, we know they have to hold insurance, but what insurance? Um, and then uh, in, ter in terms of their role, they've got to tell that the consideration and the disposal are reasonable in the circumstances. What, what test do you use there? Do you compare it with continuing without a disposal or compare it with some other restructuring route that might have been gone down? Um, and if the buyer, or indeed the administrator, I suppose, doesn't like the opinion, can he go back for an, another, view, another view? Can he say, here's a bit more information, take that into account? It's completely silent on all of that. So, well, I suppose that's, interesting. That's, that's where lawyers become important. Um, <laughs> It occurs to me also that there will have to be consequences for breach of these regulations. And as I understand it, that's another area where the regulations are silent. But yes. I imagine that the short answer to that is that if the administrator breaches the regulations, it won't only be a disciplinary matter, uh, but it'll be also a misfeasance. Uh, I so thought so. Uh, query whether or not the disposal itself can be undone. I rather suspect not. Um, one I agree. There's nothing in the regs that says that. Yeah. No, I, I think that must be right. I suppose also that we'll see a new SIP 16 or, or something, some sort of new SIP in due course. Well, uh, yeah. um, I think, actually, I did say five minutes or thereabouts. We've got <laughs> seven minutes, and I think we can be forgiven for that. Um, but if anybody's got more appetite uh, for this subject, Tom's written a great article on it, and you can find it on the Wilberforce LinkedIn um, page as well as on our website. Thanks very much, Tom. Thanks.